the official world golf rankings are stealing money from players around the world, also stealing their time and their ambition. Their money, their time, and their ambition. Why is the OWGR stealing from the players? Control. Why does any aristocracy steal from the people? Control. They want control. And by injuring those people that they're controlling, the pro player, the pro golfers in this instance, they don't care. That's, it's collateral damage. I'm, I'm sorry that you're injured, but I don't care. I am interested in controlling pro golf. And therefore, we created this OWGR system, and that's its purpose, to control golf. The fact that the players are getting stolen from is irrelevant. 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 And we'll go into more detail right now. So your thoughts on that, well, Dark Star? as I usually do for you, I go in reverse order. The, the main thing is there's still a lot of never piffers. They do not, they <laughs> want the money. They want the money, but they don't want the influence. And that's what you see is the top players are going to come with their points. And, I, you know, you could, have the, you could have the hottest 10 players in the world playing an event over in Europe. And you can't get any points. You can't break into that upper level. So there's no way to, to really change, significantly alter the rankings. Therefore, there's no meritocracy. And the aristocracy gets to continue to do whatever they want. Well, tell me about strength of field. Let's get into an important detail, how the system that the OWGR has created since 21, uh, that they were working on day and night to fix. <laughs> um, the strength of field system, give us a minute as to how that facilitates this well, total control and stealing and theft. Yeah, sure. We, we've talked about this. So... The concept is a Rory McIlroy is worth X amount of points, okay? Now, a Bryson DeChambeau is probably the hottest player on the planet right now because he went to live is worth nothing. Mm -hmm. So you have, for example, a minor PGA event, but if it's got a couple Rory McIlroys in there, it is worth more than a signature event on the DP Tour, which we saw when the Hit and Giggle Wine Country Open had more OWGR points than the flagship event on the DP Tour, the BMW at Wentworth. So it's that concept of the players already have the points in their pockets. Mm -hmm. The Scheffler, the, the McElroy. And the points go with the players. So if the players don't show up, there's no points. So if the players don't show up, who cares if you win the event? You cannot significantly rise up the standings. Mm -hmm. And that's why they are creating the signature events because – Hey, guess what? The signature events, all the top players will be there, and they all get, they're just gonna they're just gonna shuffle the points around. You have a basket of points here for the top players, a basket of points here for everybody else, and the top players are just gonna well, I'll give Rory. I know Rory's kind of got a sniffles today, so he's gonna give John a few points, and John will give him back in it's, the next event. It's it's but it, it's it, classic it's, aristocracy. Yeah, it's it's you know, stupid. Classic aristocracies. Uh, around the world throughout human civilization <laughs> seek to control as much as they possibly can so they can feather their own nests period end of story mostly about money but in this case it's about the entire s ecosystem of pro what pro golf represents to these guys and we won't, we won't get into that today but the the strength of field the players being able to carry points with them wherever they go is a lock on points uh, let's make the Let's further that detail by saying when the current top 25 in the OWGR get together and play in a signature event and 25 fabulous young players wherever, Asia, South Africa, Europe, wherever they might be, get together. So if you got the, well, let's put it that way, if you got the 25 best players from everywhere else and put them somewhere, maybe like live. Yeah. <laughs> um, that weren't in the PGA Tours hierarchy. Uh, if those guys could get together and have a tournament, and they're trying to do that on Live, and they're trying to do that elsewhere. Uh, they their points would be a fraction of the Rory Rom, yeah. you can't lay blah 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 points, and that will always be true because the guys over there playing in the whatever tournament in Asia or Europe can't 
play in that signature event. So it's when you look at it on a piece of paper, the aristocracy got together, and we'll get into who exactly that is for those of you who don't follow it that closely, who is the OWGR. Um, they said, hey, this is perfect. Yeah. <laughs> it's perfect. And of course, the PGA Tour is in there with the aristocracy because it's all one big happy family. It's, it's all the same people. The, uh, Augusta is the epicenter. They're all members there. That's where everything is coming out of. And, and on, let's, we'll put a positive spin on that and say, you know, those of us that are golf fans love Augusta. And we've always heralded how they, you know, steward the game and what the Masters tournament means to golf fans and to golfers and the tradition and all that stuff is beautiful. And if we look at that optimistically and say, well, they're do they have total control <laughs> over the game, but they're benevolent. They're doing everything that's best for everybody. They're the benevolent king of golf. And the head of the PGA of America and the head of the USGA and the head of the PGA Tour, Ed Hurley, Jimmy Dunn, those guys, they're all members there. So that, that's the epicenter. You, you can't be a commander in chief of the RNA and all these other places without being a member of Augusta, really. So that's where the small table is, right? And the OWGR is comprised of the four majors have a seat there. The PGA Tour has a seat there. The, the European Tour has a seat there. And then the one outlier is that Asian PGA or whatever yeah. that's called. I don't know. We didn't even look at them. But they're in there. So there's seven seats. But the other three seats excuse themselves, just to put a dot on it, from the live vote. So the only voting members who, who did not recuse themselves from the live application for OWGR points um, were the four majors. So the four majors voted on live, period. That's what happened. They, they're under the cloak of the OWGR, but it's the four majors. So that's why we say the OWGR is a front for the majors, and it leads to the next piece of this show, which is, why does it exist at all? Why does the, OG, why does the OWGR exist? And we touched on it off the top of the show. Control. You know, why would Augusta surrender some of their control to the other three majors because they're all part of this group, this OWGR group, and, th and that's you give up a little to gain more, right? So if you had a crack, this will lead to the PIF example you bring up, the public investment fund that's behind LIV. Um, if you have a crack in the, in the hierarchy, so if, if they didn't have an OWGR that the majors controlled and some crazy you know, renegade got in charge of the USGA, for example, Oh, that could cause some trouble. The, the, we don't then have total control because we're not all speaking from the same book. We don't all operate off the same playbook. If there's a renegade at the USGA that wants live players to have maybe some, using live as an example, to have some exemptions into the US Open. Oh, we can't have that. We need to speak as one voice. Therefore, we do have total control. And of course, you can imagine the, the kings and queens of this little aristocracy we have going on coming together and saying, well, yes, of course, that makes total sense. And that's like a cocktail conversation that they had years ago, yeah. that to have control, you need to have a union so that we have a council, a small table, to then put forth our global policy and speak as one voice. That's what the OWGR is doing. Now, it anticipated when they put the system together, they're smart people up here at the top. Ed Hurley is no ding-dong, uh, and people like that. Um, I mean, Augusta is a real who's who membership, right? So they anticipated a live type of thing coming. So live shows up with a ton of money and therefore power and influence and all the things that a ton of money brings. They bought players. They started a you know, tremendous competitive league because they could afford to do it. They spent a ton of money, a billion dollars to do it. Uh, but it was in their interest to do so. And the OWGR system handled it beautifully from the from the viewpoint of the aristocracy it's like well they're doing that it's disruptive and all that but they're not going to get points <laughs> don't think you're getting points that's not happening until you come to us and perhaps offer us you know a, a, a caravan of gold and treasure you need to come and if you want to join the aristocracy then you will need to pay us or in other some way create value for the aristocracy before we allow you into the inner sanctum. Is that happening now? Maybe. It, well, theoretically it is, and it, theoretically it is money that's making it so. 
um, which will tie into another point in a second. But that's the system that they have, and that's why they have it. That it beautiful, Live beautifully explains why the majors would have a cabal at the top, call it the OWGR, and not have a separate criteria for each major, which they could easily do. And it would be more interesting probably to have it that way. But they don't. They have this because they want to be in control, and that's how they've – you could see it unfold with the Live example, but it could be anything. It could be – that well, other it's, league that it's not tried just, to pop into it's existence. It's not just live. It's all the Asian tours. It's, it's the everything. Euro, it's yeah, the lives the biggest example. The European tour is, is, is just as bad. I mean, no, none of those guys qualify in the top fifty. Well, they've made them come to America. They they yeah. they decided that that's the epicenter for whatever reason. Who, who knows? But the point is that by doing all of this, they're stealing. So they're, they're literally stealing the life because the time you have on this planet as a professional golfer is very limited. You have from 20 to 40, and that's being generous. It might right. be, that's 20 years, it's really probably more like 15 years if you don't get injured. And there are a lot of guys that have gotten injured that you heard of at one minute and then they were gone the next minute. Or some other life-changing event that they just fell right out of the top. Um, it's a very short time. So if I prevent you from getting points and getting to the majors, a year, or two years, or three years. I delay you. I prevent you. You come, you go. Then your clock is constantly ticking. So the word steal is there on purpose in this, in this show because you are stealing their time, which is their life because then their golf life is over and they've lost, of course, they've lost actual money. Um, they've lost their, you know, their desire faded somewhere along the way. I didn't get to play in those things, and I don't care anymore. But you can imagine all players react differently. It's, it's not a meritocracy, and it never was. It may have looked like one. And yeah. it, and it, you know, but it's, if you're not a favored son, that's my last point. If you're not a favored player for whatever reason, maybe, maybe well, we'll leave that for another show. If you're not a favored player, and we can define that a lot of different ways, and the aristocracy probably does define that different ways, then we can block you any yeah. which way we want. They always, which is what they want well, to be able, they, they they be able always, to control it. Right. They always favor their favorite sons in an effort for ratings, finances, et yeah. cetera. You could argue that, yes. They, a better system has come along, and now they need to quash the system, and they have the tools to do it. Yeah, and I, and I would argue that the uh, controlling the system so that the best players are there and they can manipulate it for the good of the game... Yeah. is not really the primary purpose. That's an ancillary purpose. The, the, the primary purpose is so that the game looks and performs the way they want it to perform, regardless of the fans. That, that's yeah. not the number. It's nice to have it be a good experience for fans. Right. Because that has other benefits. But it's not the primary, right. it's not the primary mission. And uh, that's a whole other yeah. deep piece of this. So I, I'm going to wrap on that note. Um, what are your tell us your last comments well, uh, my last this. comment obviously the ranking system is obviously so ludicrous i mean think about the college football analogy would the number one team in the country consistently lose to the number 31st team in the country because right now no. kepka would beat scheffler the majority of the time let's be honest yeah. these rankings don't pass the smell test I, i'm more looking at it from a pure sporting standpoint it's ridiculous and, and yeah. Yeah. It's stupid. I, uh, yes. And there's a lot more to this conversation. Obviously, we could go at least another hour probably. And we will. So if you want to catch more details and more nuances, uh, more interesting points about this whole OWGR thing, podcast, go to the audio podcast, sign up there, and we're going to go much deeper on this topic there. Until next time, B-Team is out. Dr. Darkstar is out. If you're a fan of the show, be sure to subscribe to our new audio podcast, Unfiltered and Off Script. That is where you will get all of our show prep material, wide-ranging conversation on how we come up with these topics, what we choose to zero in on that makes it to uh, the video and the YouTube format, uh, as well as topics that will never get to YouTube. And there are a lot of those that we like to talk about that will never make it to YouTube. So. Uh, look in the description below for the link over to Substack. That's where you can subscribe to the podcast. And thank you again for being a fan.